This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. More than four billion people live across this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. On this edition, patrolling the desert, meet Jordan's camel riding desert police, tasked to guard a vast tribal territory and maintain peace and stability. It is the main pillars of the stability to the whole system, to the political system. Because uh, they have a unity between others, and uh, of course they have uh, relations with the other tribes, so they can observe the peace and uh, they can uh, solve the, the problems without going to the government. And career change, how former tree cutters in southwest China became protectors of the forest and its inhabitants. I'm Tao Yuan, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. From an arid desert in the Middle East to a lush forest here in China, we'll take you to different places under the protection of guardians, people charged with keeping peace and preserving order. In Jordan, a desert-based police force has for several decades safeguarded a region that's home to different tribes. Since its founding in the 1920s, Jordan's Royal Desert Forces has helped maintain stability not only in the desert, but throughout the country as a whole. Natalie Carney was in Wadi Rum in South Jordan, where she joined the desert police and their camels on patrol. One of the most beautiful, breathtaking heritage sites, Wadi Ram in Jordan, is adored for both its natural beauty and rich culture. Spanning an area close to 80,000 hectares, or four-fifths of this Middle Eastern monarchy, its desert landscape featuring dramatic sandstone mountains, plains of red sand, and rocky caverns date back thousands of years. Its mainstays, the Bedouins. Wadi Ram's Bedouins live a traditional lifestyle without any modern comforts. Salam <laughs> Salah has five children and two wives. His son Fadi shows us around their traditional Bedouin tent. This is This is Luxuries are sparse. This radio and one lantern run off batteries. Temperatures in the desert can reach well over 40 degrees Celsius, but they're used to it. Jordan's Bedouins have always led a simple and largely autonomous life, left alone by the government to run their own affairs. Community issues are usually dealt with by local tribal elders and Jordan's royal desert forces. 
when the Emirate of Transjordan was mandated to the British Empire in the 1920s, after the First World War, the British established a rule of law in the desert, mirroring their own system. The new police patrol were called the Camel Corp. Today, Jordan's Royal Desert Forces is a 4,000-man branch of the National Police Force tasked with securing this vast desert landscape. These desert police patrol some 8,000 square kilometers, so from time to time they like to stop by and catch up with the locals. The desert police make it a point to maintain good relations with all the Bedouin tribes. Not a difficult task, since most police force members are Bedouins themselves. علاقة ممتازة وعلاقة جيدة وكل أسبوع وكل شهر في عنا مجلس محلي داخل البادية نجتمع مع الوجوه والعشائر والمخاتير ضمن المنطقة أساسا إذا في عندهم أي مشاكل بتكون بينهم مشاكل بس داخلية تنحل أساسا الوسطوا المشاكل اللي عندهم للجهات المعنية According to experts, smooth tribal ties are among the reasons Jordan has remained stable in a rather unstable neighborhood. And I think the tribes in Jordan, it is the main pillars of the stability to the whole system, to the political system, because uh, they have a unity between others, and uh, of course they have the relations with the other tribes, so they can observe the peace and uh, they can uh, solve the, the problems without going to the government. The enduring public support for Jordan's King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein is also attributed to his tribal roots. بالنسبة للعشائر أقل ناس تأثروا في المناطق لأنهم متماسكين حتى في المناطق المجاورة لأنهم متماسكين حتى جلالة الملك هو ابن عشيرة هو هاشمي قرشي فلذلك مش بعيدين عن بعض. This is the main power of the system here that the people look. To the monarch and the monarchy in general, as uh, something which is very important, something which is uh, uh, belongs to them, and something which is, after all, they admire it and uh, they obey their orders. Major Abdullah Mohammed Assam has been working with the Desert Forces since 1988. Most of the force's members are from Wadi Ram and Bedouin communities. يعني أنت تجيب واحد من مثل منطقة عمان صعب إنه يعرف الم المنطقة بينما من مناطق العشائر يعرف الاختصاص والمنطقة الجغرافية والتعامل مع المواطنين ومع طبيعة ال 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 المواطنين الموجودين بالاختصاص. لأنها منطقة برية يجوز يضيع واحد من ابناك. يجوز يجيك عواصف رعدية أمطار شغلة زيك هم يساعدوك الملكية هم اللي يساعدوك نعم البادية هم أهل المنطقة هم اللي خابرين يعني القبائل المنتهى والشغلة زيك يصيروا بينهم يم يحلوا قبائل إنهم يأمنون بتنوك مية في البلد ونجيب مية منهن ونودي الحلالنا While desert vehicles have been introduced, the desert forces, also known as the camel police, still play a critical role in securing the area.
فبعد فترة طويلة تفتح الطرق صارت المنطقة أوسع أسهل فاستخدمنا سيارات وخف استخدامنا للهجانة بالمواقع قوات البادي الملكية وحدة الهجانة احنا نقوم بدوريات في مناطق يعني غير وسائل النقل صعب الوصول إليها يعني هي عثرت لا نقول لا عثرت بس يعني يبقى التراث موجود يبقى الإنسان دائما محب أن يحافظ على التراث And desert people respect that heritage يا سيدي الجمال هن جزء لا يتجزا من حياة البادي فبدون الجمال لا يمكن الحياة كان يعني نستخدم الجمال في التنقل في نقل أمتعتنا في نقل المياه في حتى في الغزوات اللي كانت القديمة هي الوسيلة الجمال والخيل فهذه علاقة وطيدة يعني ونحن نعرف أن الجمال أنواع يعني في منهن بس للتنقل ولكن وفي نوع جمال للسباقات. So how important, how deep is the relationship between a Bedouin and his camel? Well, the camel, I mean, he has the ability to handle the pain and the pain and to handle the far distances. And this is from the old days, I mean, with the Hajjana, from the founding of the Hajjana, I mean, all on the first one, the first one, the first one. يعني تأسيسه كله على إبل وما في وسيلة نقل كان على إلا على الجمل والجمل يعني إشي الكثير للبدوي وفي علاقة يعني بين الجمل وركابة. It takes three months to properly train a camel to perform police duties. هذه الواجبات بالنسبة للجمال اللي في وحدة الهجانة هي نفس طبيعة الجمال الأخرى بس إحنا نقوم بتأهيلها وتدريبها. لكي نقوم بالتأدي للغرض المطلوب تقريبا على كيف تركب كيف تمشي لوحده كيف تمشي مع مجموعة الهجانة يعني لكي يقوم في الواجب يعني المعني Aside from maintaining peace and order in the area the desert forces also assist an increasing number of tourists in Wadi Ram براقبهم دائما نطلع معهم على في المناطق المخيمات اللي جوا أي مشاكل بصير مع الزوار مع أي مواطنين داخل المنطقة وادي رم تكون ضمن اختصاص البادية الملكية. Well, I think it's interesting because you know the history thing and also this is so I don't know special. Yeah, I never seen this. I mean in China and also a lot of maybe a TV show, but this is more real in person. Yes, I took a lot of photos and I share with my friends and I definitely recommend them to come. <laughs> Although there are concerns about its impact on local culture, Bedouins like Salah appreciate the advantages of tourism. There are seven Bedouin villages across Wadi Ram. This is one of them. Many, however, are concerned about the possible erosion on this very unique culture that mass tourism to the area could have. However, when you actually sit down and speak to the Bedouins themselves, many see tourism as a means of survival. Allah, the difficulties, as you say, the economic things, the things that are in the Sahara, they don't get anything. The tourists are coming to the nature. The nature, we are the Bedouins. والحمد لله انهم تفرجوا علينا على طبيعتنا على كرمنا على جودنا وهم كيف وياخذوا طبيعه ان الارض فيها بدو بعدها منطقتنا بدو واحنا نستفيد ولا هم كويسين وشغله زي هيك ان عيالنا يتعلموا الانجليزي لا مدارس قريب لنا ولا شيء يلاقوهم بيتعلموا منهم انجليزي وعربي وزي As some of Jordan's neighbors face violent conflicts, maintaining the harmony among Bedouin tribes and keeping the local economy strong through tourism are among the desert forces' most critical tasks. Yet some experts say there are contemporary pressures on Jordan's tribal system as the country works to maintain its stability. No, the biggest challenge for the tribes and to keep them in the political system, to keep them in parties, and this will depend on a lot of things. One of things to have a political parties which attract the young people of these tribes to be in these parties. Almost every Jordanian has tribal roots, but for the country's Bedouins, that sense of identity and belonging comes not only from their tribe, but from the wide open desert that they call home.
For Assignment Asia, I'm Natalie Carney in the Wadi Ram Desert, Southern Jordan. With extremism and sectarian conflict wreaking destruction in neighboring countries, some experts say the close relationship between Jordan's government and tribal communities has become more important than ever. Coming up, get to know the guardians of a forest in China's Sichuan province. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between. We capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. They cut trees for a living during the years of China's breakneck economic growth until disaster struck. After a great flood in 1998, the loggers of Old Creek Forest here in Sichuan province had to switch careers, becoming protectors of the forest and its wildlife. I spent time with Old Creek's forest rangers as they carried out their job, one they'd never imagined doing, but now embrace with pride. Jiang Hai and Chen Xianghui know Old Creek in Sichuan province like the back of their hands. They're rangers of this tiny forest, working among its natural inhabitants. While they may not encounter wildlife every day, they're never far. A sound, a movement in the trees, traces as tiny as a strand of fur to them are natural wonder. Old Creek is their perfect office, just about 100 square kilometers on the map, but home to dozens of wild species. The celebrities, giant pandas, 14 of them, almost a tenth of their entire wild population in the world. Chen and Jiang have worked in Old Creek their entire adult life, but they haven't always been its protectors. Quite the opposite. For two decades, Old Creek was a tree logging site. And a period of economic development it was. Forests were being ravaged for timber to fuel growth. The Old Creek logging site was producing up to 3,000 cubic meters of timber every year. Laborers like Jiang and Chen were hailed as the symbol of the spirit of hardworking Chinese people associated with high wage and social status. That changed in the summer of 1998. A massive flooding of the Yangtze River killed over 3,000 people and damaged or destroyed more than 13 million homes. Deforestation was partly blamed. The logging site in Old Creek, like many across China, was shut down and placed under a nationwide plan called the National Forest Protection Project. Loggers like Chen and Jiang did not lose their jobs. Instead, they turned from forest destroyers to its guardians, a new role they didn't know how to fit into. Jiang 
这个生命资源，这个野生动物资源不能再被破坏。那个时候，那个生活方式可枯燥了，<笑>就在这些里面走一走嘛，看一看到处。然后我们的职工有有一些养一点蜜蜂，有些在这里面种一点那个的地，<笑>没有多大意思。It wasn't just to kill time. It was out of economic necessity. As the logging ban took effect, their profits declined. The wage of these newly turned rangers plummeted to just about 100 U.S. dollars a month. 老人呢就觉得，养活一家人很困难，就说就不愿意再从事这方面的工作。那么当然，你肯定就要想想法，就说要从想改行啊，或者是。做其他的，你至少能要能够养活一家人嘛。他们懂的是怎么去测量这个树的胸径，怎么让它更更快、更好的倒下去，然后不可能不损伤这个树干，然后怎么运出去，然后呃砍更多的木材，卖更多的钱，然后为国家来创收创收利润。那突然一夜之间就从伐木工变成了护林员。王继梅 is a conservationist with the U.S. NGO TNC or the Nature Conservancy. For the past six years, she worked alongside Jiang and Chen in Old Creek. The program she manages was largely responsible for getting the ex-loggers back on their feet. TNC's fund would later cover their wage, increasing it by several folds, and the program would help these ex-loggers rediscover their worth. But these came very much as a byproduct. TNC's original goal was to create a land trust in Old Creek. Put simply, to take away forest protection work from the government and place it in the hands of non-government entities. 自然资源管理其实它就是处于公共服务的这个范畴。那公共服务的社会化，它最核心的一点就是参与这个公共服务的主体应该是多元化的。如果民间的机构、公益的机构，然后能够参与到这个自然保护管理里面，其实是对整个这个。呃，自然保护事业的一个体制是一种创新，所以我觉得最大的意义应该是在于在于这个地方。This has been an established model in Western societies, but in China it was fairly new, especially in small backward mountain areas like Old Creek. TNC's goal was largely met with skepticism. 当时工大职工嘛，就说有些不理解，就说呃，进入这个嘛，就是。就说有一个后顾之忧呢，就说生怕就说被人家替换掉，把这片的这一片我们的这一片资源拿走过后，那么就说我们今后的出路呢，就有一个担忧。因为你要从政府这边接收这个地，然后他们又是在这个地方，甚至从他们的父辈开始，他们好多都是爸爸妈妈，然后他们现现在我们的好多这个保护区的员工，就是原来国有林场的职工嘛，然后他们小时候就是接接替班那种，然后就进来了，就开始工作了。这是一个历史，你必须去尊重它。在很偏远的地区，然后呃，年复一年，日复一日的，就是这样的生活，每天就是这样。可能在在在大山里面是很枯燥的，去去你你待可能一天很新鲜，然后待个三五天觉得好玩，然后到后面，你你就你就想你一辈子都在这儿啊，你都走不出去，你就要做这个工作，而这个工作又不是社会上。可能特别认可的一个行业，大家不知道你在干什么的，他们的付出其实没有得到相应的尊重。其实这一批国有林场的工人，然后在天宝的这个工程下面做的很多事情，嗯，是为真真的是为中国整个这个生态系统，呃，贡献了很多很多。Wang understood what it's like to be stripped of a job and a sense of purpose. 就像我自己，我我妈妈就是，呃，钢铁企业里面的，嗯，国企的一个普通的一个，还算是技术工人嘛。那也是就是，九十年代初，从很辉煌，然后突然到很没落。然后其实他那个时候，呃，三十出头，呃，也是挺有想法的。Not for long. A few years later, China started a drastic reconstructuring of its state-owned enterprises, 
privatizing some and shutting down others. The result from 1995 to 2002, tens of millions of jobs in the state sector were cut. My mom actually from the public sector. 的那一批，然后是特别有感悟的，就是他们在那个大的这样一个改革的潮流里面，呃，是是很弱势的群体，但是就是突然的这样的，因为因为国家的这个时代的一个进步，那对于这种国有企业的人，他他嗯，他是被命运，他是被这种大的时代所左右的，他个人的这个。小小的这个缩影，其实他当时不觉得有什么，但是其实，包括对他自己、对对对家庭，甚至对这个现在我子女，甚至后代，其实有很很多影响。Wang's team didn't want the same fate for these ex-loggers. Turns out, it didn't take much to help them. They had knowledge of this forest, and they have been doing basic protection work. As funds and modern equipment and ideas began flowing in, they proved to be reliable colleagues. Oh, 人家为啥子会宣传我们这个点？道理都在这儿。那就是也就是说，我们能够把这个把这个事做好。And they did. Over the years, they've put an end to illegal hunting, and they've helped establish a baseline inventory of the plants and wildlife in the forest. The hardest part is over. Now, as conservationists pull out, these ex-loggers are taking leadership. They can now fund themselves. They've helped establish community farming programs in nearby villages. The proceedings benefit the villagers and the forest at the same time. The people who have lost their lives, many people have to get rid of it. There are also fish in the forest. They all have to get rid of it. They all have to get rid of it. 他们才把它现，因为他们给我们找了更多的门路，让我们也增加了收入，把我们的这个山，这个青山流流流进这个水变得更绿了。我们祖祖辈辈生活在这个地方，环境对我们来说，我们是最大的受益者。他们才是真正能够扎扎在这里，然后做这些长期的保护工作的人。他们才是这片森林的主人，然后他们也才是真正能够最后留在这个地方的人。And they stay with pride。说实在话啊，作为这个做保护上啊，竹林区这个啊，这个实际上比其他行业都辛苦。现在呢，我敢很自豪地说，就说通过我们这么多年，然后把这个保护区能够把我们的野生鱼类。把这个野生动物的的种群，还有这个森林植被的恢复啊，能够看到有这么好的林子，然后能够遇有这么多的遇见野生动物的基地，然后河里面，嗯，也能够经常看到这些，嗯，珍稀鱼种啊，能够把我们这一块这个地地域能够保护起来啊，就觉得自己干这一份事啊没白干。A legacy of natural wonder. That is part of their everyday life. The Nature Conservancy plans to expand its model of forest conservation in Sichuan to other parts of China in cooperation with local governments. It aims to establish 10 new protected areas in the next three to five years. You can learn more about this and all the stories on today's program on our website, www.assignment-asia.com. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Tao Yuan. Thanks for watching, and join us again on Assignment Asia.